All right, let's talk about the basic parts of a research paper. Remember back when you were a kid in school and you got assigned a science fair project and you had to have that trifold board and you know, hopefully your parents helped you out and it was probably stressful back then trying to do a science project, right? In many ways, a research paper, it's the same thing. It basically has some of those same parts. You remember what you had? There was like a hypothesis and some materials you had to use. Uh, and there, and there was the a result section and a conclusion. Journal articles have basically all the same parts. Again, we'll go into this way deeper in the lit review course, but let me just give you a brief overview of those parts now. There's always, well, first off, some kind of abstract, right? The, a summary of the paper, a title, some keywords. The keywords are, are sort of like tags, usually help, really helpful in a digital setting to help you find topics. But once you get past that, there's a lit review, a methods section, a results section, and a conclusion. Those are the four main parts. So first, they're gonna summarize what other people have done uh, and to identify where a gap in the literature is that they're gonna then try to fill. Next is the method section. The methods, method section, it's, it's like a recipe, right? Have you ever tried to cook something? What do you need? There's usually three parts to the recipe and there's kind of three parts-ish to a method section. You need your ingredients, you need uh, your equipment, and you need the steps that you're gonna take to make the thing, right? So in research terms, this metaphor is uh, your subjects, your samples, the who, like who'd you get, how'd you get them? Were they people you interviewed? Were they people you surveyed? But there has to be a who. Who are the people that you got, and what was the logic behind how you, uh, you know, got access to them? Then you need to have your equipment or your gear or your variables or whatever. The, now, the equipment, if you say you're doing a medical study, it might be something as complex as an MRI machine. But if you're doing a psychological, educational or sociological study, your equipment might be something as simple as uh, a voice recorder or it might be uh, a, a scale, an inventory that people answer questions on. But you still in the method section have to tell us what tools you're using. And then lastly are the procedures or the steps. That's the last part of your method section, right? Step one is, you know, here's the logic of how we went out and gathered folks. Here's what we did with them. Maybe you're doing an experiment. Here's how we set up the control group and the experiment group. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff there, but uh, those are the three main parts of your method section, right? The people, the equipment or the gear, and the steps you took. And you're telling people just enough so that they, if they needed to or wanted to, they could replicate your project. That's an important part of science. It needs to be replicable, it's just like a recipe, right? The whole idea of a recipe is that it can be replicable. Someone else can make that same thing. So if you tell them way too much detail, you're kind of like talking down to them. Nobody likes that. But if you don't tell them enough detail, they might not be able to replicate the project. And then that's sort of a problem for the scientific method. So we've covered lit review, method section, then comes the results. Results is also sometimes called findings, right? Or maybe they'll, they'll talk about the data or there might be different phrases they use. But this is where they give you, you know, here's, here's the patterns we found. In quantitative projects, that often, they're often a little bit, this section is shorter. And in qualitative projects, it's bigger. And that's because tables of statistics take up a lot less space than lots of quotes and observational description. Right, so the more narrative requirements of writing quotes out and saying, what, telling people what you saw in a, in a qualitative project makes that section a little longer. But you're basically just accounting for the data. What did you find? It should be very objective, uh, and you're not telling us yet why you think these outcomes happened. You're simply telling us what you found. The last section is the discussion. Sometimes it's called the conclusion. Sometimes your conclusion is within the discussion. There's no one way it's worded, but the one thing that you're trying to do in this final section, the main thing I should say you're trying to do is explain why you got the results you got. So think of it this way. At this point, you've read the literature and, and walked us through it in the lit review. You've gathered data. You've analyzed that data. You've looked for patterns. You've put in all the hard work so that now you get to be the person that we trust to tell us why you think some of these patterns turned out the way they did. Those are basically the four main parts of a paper. Lit review, methods, results, discussion, and of course references, an abstract and a title. But those four pieces are the backbone.